Hey, man. What's up? Uh, have you ever heard of John Edward Mack? John Edward Mack. John Edward Mack. J Mac. Um, yeah. No. Um, <clears throat> have you ever heard of like when people say like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's a WWE SmackDown. They get it from Mac. what? They, it comes from his last name. Like that's where they got the idea for that from. Was yeah a WWE Smackdown. Was that your attempt at a joke? What is that? <laughs> it's the truth. That's where they got it. WWE Smackdown. Uh, so, a... <laughs> he was it. Yeah, he was before the WWE. I'll well, do the. I, it like, how about you do the story part and I'll do like the funny part. Hey, I bet somebody laughed. If you laughed, leave a review and tell us you laughed. <laughs> and if you didn't laugh, please don't leave us a review. <laughs> Let us get to some funnier parts first, <laughs> and then leave a review and say you laughed. <laughs> it really does help if you leave a podcast review. The man with the big bean eyes told me to kill you. The big bean <laughs> eyes told me to take you out. No, you are. She was so. a witch, bro. <laughs> they all see that you're gaslighting me right now. Hey, you're gaslighting me. You just slowly <laughs> push slowly, their hair further very back. Very slowly, be like, man, I think you're bald. Oh, I'm, just try- I'm just trying to shape it. <laughs> <laughs> What's here? What the shooter has to say. <laughs> Things I learned last night. Uh, so, uh, John E. Mac, Edward Mac, John Edward Mac. We can call him John. Uh, he was um, a boy born in 1904. Uh, okay. In or 1929 to a father who was born in 1904. <laughs> His father was born in 1904. He, he was, was born, born in 1929. In 1929. Okay. Yes, in New York City, um, to a pretty like uh, uh, what's the word academic family, and he had a father that was like you got to do your studies and you got to learn your stuff. You know, I want to know that you can play piano and tell me about maths and he said maths, not math. You yeah. know, like one of those kind of dads, you know, what yeah. I'm talking about um, and so he uh, he grew up. Uh, uh, yeah. Have you done your homework son? No, they didn't give us any at school. I'm not talking about the school homework. Yeah, I'm talking about your home homework. Yeah, and he's like, oh, I did do that homework and he's like, well, did you do your other homework? And he's like, what homework dad? He's the homework that you give yourself and and it was like this weird and then this and they always watched like weird versions of movies that existed like homework bound (laughs) and they were like what the heck (laughs) we review (laughs) (laughs) stupid (laughs) stupid (laughs) dumb stuff Uh, uh, and his dad his dad like (laughs) this is an interesting thing that his dad did um, they weren't a religious family, but he yeah. read his Bible to him and his siblings okay. um, to like learn culture. He's like, he's like, I want you to be cultured, and he's like, so listen to this story. This is the story. Is this a story about David the kid or the story about the dad? Because it seems no, like the dad the is the just kind of like math <laughs> and the Bible, but not like the Bible like normal, like a lot of dads are about the Bible. But it's more like the Bible, like, hey, you should know this stuff. Listen to this story. This is the most relevant story to humanity. Yeah, but not to him. Okay, <laughs> so he uh, he went on uh, to go to medical school. Um, obviously, got his degree in medical school in uh, 1947. Went on to get a graduate degree in 1951. Okay, and finally graduated from Harvard in 55. Uh, after that, he worked uh, at the Massachusetts General Hospital uh, doing psychology. He was a therapist. Okay, um, and then uh, you know, like a lot of people. Uh, war happens, and so in 1959 he joins the Air Force and serves as a medic in Japan, um, and uh, rose to the rank of captain. Was very distinguished in his medical army journey, um, and then he came back, uh, returns from his military service, and he has a great career in psychotherapy and uh, studying specifically people's experiences and how they relate to like their worldview and how it relates to how they interact with other people in the world, you know? Okay. And so like how your your worldview shapes your behavior. Um, yeah. And how your worldview shapes your behavior. I'm here. I'm listening. <laughs> and then he gets You're just reading it like a young adult graphic novel. <laughs> Sorry. And then he went off to war <laughs> and was a medic. And you're like, what is he a shirtless medic? Why are you talking <laughs> like this? <laughs> Um, so one day while he is 
at the Washington or back at the Massachusetts General Hospital. Okay, um, and he's doing psychotherapy here. He's doing psychotherapy. Okay, a client leaves uh, his office and he peers out the window. It's a full moon, and, he and watches the moon him walk straight <laughs> into the woods. <laughs> Backwards. <laughs> backwards was like, he's like, I gotta be with he that guy tomorrow. The woods backwards. No, he's he's looking out he's peering out the window. It's full moon. Uh his shirt's I don't off. like where his this chest is, is glistening in the moonlight. This freaking <laughs> a full moon as the moonbeams shineth down. He wipes his, his hair away from his eyes. He's got a receding hairline, but it's still hot. <laughs> it's the hottest it's receding. So hairline. hot, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Mac. <laughs> You're seeing a hairline. <laughs> <laughs> I love your male pattern baldness. <laughs> your alpha male pattern baldness. <laughs> This isn't no male pattern ball. This is alpha. This male is alpha pattern. male pattern baldness. <laughs> <laughs> it's what freaking men have on their heads. Um, so he he uh, he, he starts studying it's specifically uh, people's worldviews and how it shapes their behavior, uh, and then also uh, teens and <laughs> just that just teens because they're teens. very weird. Yeah, they're weird and then heroin addicts. Those are his three oh, kind of okay. areas of expertise that he's yeah. studying um, and he becomes pretty prominent gets published in 152 uh, scientific journals and actually publishes a number of books as well. Sure um, and this lands him a job as a professor at Harvard um, and within five years he becomes the director of the psychology program at, at Harvard, Harvard gets tenured and is like kind of like a um, a global Name in the psychology field by okay. the time the eighties roll around. Sure, like he's very highly respected. In 1990, he's serving in kind of two capacities. He's a professor, a full-time professor. He's directing that Harvard psychology department. And he's doing that, but he's also still has a private practice, and so he's still doing therapy with people, um, specifically younger people, but uh, anyone. But specifically, he leaned towards youths. Youths. Um, and uh, one day someone comes into his office and uh, it was an interesting experience for him because they told him a story that typically he his gut response and the rest of the scientific community probably their response would be you're a crazy person, um, but he hears the story. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, I, I Tim, love, Tim saw my face. I love the notice you. The moment you notice is the best. Good <laughs> comment, dude. I hate that you buried the lead on this one too. <laughs> All right, what did he tell him? Uh, so the guy comes and he tells him a story. I hate that you told him. this guy's not relevant to the story at all, dude. No, he actually is. He's the point of the story. Okay. <laughs> so this this uh, patient <laughs> tells him a story. Uh-huh. Uh, the other night, he was sleeping in his bed, and he was abducted by aliens. <laughs> and he tells him the whole story, and Doctor Mac notices. He said the response that this individual is having is not a um, psychotic response. This is a he's, trauma. Yeah, response. he has experienced this. Yeah, he's like this sure. is an authentic experience. And he said, I don't know if I would go as far as to say this guy was actually abducted by aliens, but there is some trauma that he experienced. Sure, that he's reliving. He's, yeah, and this is not a psycho uh, issue. Yeah. Um, and so he found this very interesting. And so he continued seeing this patient going through the, the thing with him and did a number of psychoanalyses to see if he actually did have any sort of condition that would explain the man having this experience. Okay. And they. He couldn't. He couldn't find anything that would explain away right. the thing. So he put out an ad on Craigslist and he said, "Anybody who's been abducted by aliens, I want to talk to you." That's not real. He didn't. This was pre Craigslist. But I was gonna say, but he like he did put out a thing. It was like, hey, he did go and start. He left. Out. A, he left a thing at Starbucks. That said, "Have you been abducted, <laughs> Have you been by, abducted aliens? by aliens? Call this number. Let us make fun of you on YouTube." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he. Uh, the number of comments on our voicemail videos where people are like, 
these are just innocent people who called in and like they and you're making fun of them. It's insane. And you're like, all right. It's also crazy how quickly that changed because when yeah. we put that out in twenty twenty one, people were like, ah, they were like, this is hilarious. Yeah, and then like two years later, people were like, those people have mental issues, and you and you're like, and hey, they're like, you're a bully. You have mental issues. You should you're respect the one. them because they want to be a cat. And it's like, ah. <laughs> no one calling in is serious. No one, yeah, no one calling in was like, oh yeah, I want that. It's like, yeah, cat yeah, daddy. You know, like nobody. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. the one who you're miserable and it's your fault. Yes. That's kind of the message to everybody right now <laughs> is honestly you're scrolling social media. You're getting ticked off by everything yeah. and you're making yourself miserable. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So quit that. Yeah. Quit doing that. Um, so he uh, he found 200 individuals who claim to have been abducted by in aliens okay. over the course of a couple of years interviews them does a few sessions with them to understand their experience um, to see if they've all got that same kind of trauma yeah, response kind yeah, of stuff to see it, it okay. is this a common response or I'm a little more interested in the story than incident. I am some of the other, other aliens uh, and what he finds is after interviewing these 200 people not a single one of them showed any signs of any sort of um, psychotic break or anything like that. Okay, um, all of them showed signs of a trauma response. Okay, and so he started kind of raising some red flags and saying, hey, we always just write these people off, but there's something interesting happening here. He also noticed that the experiences were strikingly similar uh, across these people. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the most common storyline that he noticed. Uh, people were typically at home asleep in their bed. Um, and they woke up to some sort of noise, like either a vibrating sound or like a, um, like a, I don't know how to describe it, like a shock wave type sound. Um, like a, yeah, yeah, something like that's that. That's pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty like good. Do it again. Zzz, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Or like a, yeah. I'm yes. really good at this. Something like that. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> I can't believe we got that on camera, but I'm like, <laughs> Then I'm like really good at alien noises. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. If, if, if yeah. wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, Have you seen so, that TikTok video? No. Oh, you haven't seen that? Yeah, you don't know, I don't what, know I'm what you're doing right now. Oh, there's a girl who's. <laughs> there's a girl. <laughs> a girl, a lady. She, I don't know. She's older than us. And she goes, step back from that ledge, my friend. When she step back from that ledge, my friend. <laughs> and it's like the caption is POV. I accidentally caught myself finding out that I can actually sing. <laughs> she's like, step back from that ledge, my <laughs> and, and it's like, and so now people just do that as a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was I, she doing I, it as a bit? No, <laughs> she was serious. She was like, and she was like, she like she looks at the camera and she goes, oh my gosh, like, and she's not good. I was gonna say. I was gonna say. Yeah. Can she sing? I saw. I saw one last night where uh, a girl's in the bathroom and she's listening to the. I see dreams. Of <laughs> and she goes. I have dreams. <laughs> what a wonderful world. <laughs> I can do it. I can't believe I caught that on camera. <laughs> I can't believe you're here to. That's see how this. I feel about these alien noises. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty alien -y. Seems like I've heard it before, Seems and that's like my trauma response. <laughs> I'm gifted. Don't honk at me while I'm walking. <laughs>Hey, thanks for checking out this episode of Things I Learned Last Night. Uh, if you like our show and you want more of it, we have plenty of other episodes. Uh, one that I enjoyed was Jose Canseco, uh, you know, the baseball player from like the 90s and stuff, but also it's kind of an alien episode. Uh, spoiler alert. So uh, go check that out. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, and uh, now back to this episode. Uh, so they would hear the sound. It would mm -hmm. wake them up. Yeah, uh, and then they would see a bright light, and then they would lose time. Next thing they would know, um, they were back in their bed, um, and hours had passed. Sure, um, and they would have. I think they just died. They would have pain in their sides, uh, and so many of them also had scar scarring, like actual legitimate scarring. Uh, that uh, Dr. John Mack said does not seem self-inflicted. 
um, just because of the location of it. Typically, self-inflicted wounds are. In yeah, the, where's the scars? That are in their side. Like right here. Yeah. What kind of scars are we talking? Like incision type scars. Oh. Yeah. And so, kind of strange. Like I got a scar here from my appendectomy. Oh yeah, I forgot you did that. Yep. What that was just something I went. What made you decide to do that? Thanks for asking. Um, <laughs> Dude, we could just we could corporate podcast this. Well, yeah, what you know, I, so that's a great question. Um, <laughs> you know, when I got out of college, I was just kind of floating around, and I was like, "It'd be fun to do." Yeah, I don't need it. I just, you know, yeah, I felt and like that's I was how carrying I feel, this weight. That's that what I'm saying. I feel like, like, you know, there's a lot of stuff in my life where I go, "I don't need this." I don't why do need I? That. Why am I holding on to this yeah. stuff still? So I just got an appendectomy, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, you know, two years later, I, I was feel a so much lighter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, also, my parents paid for college, so <laughs> it made it a lot. You know, I didn't have any debt, and I was like, well, I want to experience what that's like. I had a, I had a similar experience. Uh, I just felt that like a, a lot of what I was trying to do in business, uh huh. Um, I was getting held back from just like I, I had these like self limiting beliefs, right? And I could feel in my heart that like I right. wasn't gonna make it. So I, I called up my doctor. I was like, mm-hmm. Doc, I need you to take my heart out. Um, they said we can't. That's <laughs> we not can't how do that. that work. Yeah, but luckily I, f- I found, found a guy a in Lebanon. In Lebanon, <laughs> yeah, he said, "I got you, Missouri." <laughs> and so um, Lebanon, and so Missouri. We flew out there, and uh, he took my heart out. And now I don't feel a thing, been so physically much, or emotionally. I've been better ever since. Yeah, it's crazy how much I can get done with no yeah. heart. But I have to sleep sixteen hours a day. But but it's okay because I get more done. You're pretty pale right now. <laughs> I get more done in eight hours than you get in all twenty four of yours. <laughs> Anyways, hey, could you pour some blood down my throat real quick? <laughs> I can't lift my arms. I need you to do it for me. Can you a little bit of that blood? <laughs> Did you call it blood? <laughs> yeah, it's French. <laughs> blood. That's <laughs> how it's spelled. Yeah, I just uh, you know. All right, I hate this. <laughs> so, Doctor Mac, uh, uh, so yeah, he's like, there's scars that aren't scars. Yeah, and some of them would say that in that gap where there was lost time, they would say they remember they have like, uh, and you touch and go memories. Sure. Yeah, touch. Yeah, exactly. Of like being in some metallic room where people were operating on them. Um, people is a strong word. Beings were operating on them. Um, people is a strong word. Yeah. What, what is what is what's interesting is they came back um, and almost all of them. I don't have like a percentage, but I do know the majority of them said that they felt as though um, they needed to become um, like an environmentalist. They're like, we feel like we need to protect the earth was like they they would wake up and they they would have this like like, pressing urge. I gotta go talk to a tree right now. (laughs) And then they talked to that tree and the tree would just belittle the tree was like (laughs) me 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 oh we save you. I'm not in danger. (laughs) I'm not afraid of you. I can handle myself. (laughs) You're like, okay, sorry. (laughs) All right. Anyway. (laughs) Um they woke up and they were like, we gotta save the planet. Yeah. So he writes a couple papers about this, and scientific journals are like, we're not publishing this. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, so he just writes a book. And uh, you know what happened to Elon? That's why he made electric cars. <laughs> he got arrested. No, I, no, I think he's an alien. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so uh, John writes this book, and he kind of becomes like the most academically distinguished person. That is saying there might be something to this, and he's not actually saying he never says this as aliens. He never says yeah, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. these people got abducted. He says there's something to their experience. He's like there's too much similarities. It's definitely a trauma response. I can't explain the scarring. And he said I think we should look into this more. It's kind of is all he's really saying. Um, people are like, yeah, you think aliens are real, idiot? Done. Yeah, and he's saying he's saying I think we should validate these people's experience basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he starts catching some flack from Harvard. Um, and okay, uh, a a independent um, confidential review gets launched from Harvard into Doctor John Mack okay. for malpractice. They oh. feel that because he was not saying, "Hey, yeah, you have a psychotic a psychotic condition." Yeah. Um. He because he was just saying, "Hey, there they might be like, something that's here." Res- that's irresponsible that you are. Yes. And so they're saying that's malpractice. And they were trying to remove his tenure at Harvard, which is something that has never happened before and never happened since. 
Um, and so they launched this investigation. Um, and it stayed underground for a couple of years while they were investigating him. And the only reason it became public is because they started having to go do personal interviews. And someone was like, hey, I had this call with your boss. <laughs> yeah, someone called me the other day and they were like, Chopsticks was on Glenstone <laughs> and it was owned by Tony and Michelle. <laughs> someone called me the other day and they were asking me about your hairline. And uh, <laughs> is this him? <laughs> yeah, this is him. I called that. <laughs> I called that so good, dude. <laughs> he's not. He's a handsome fellow. Yeah, yeah. He does have a good hairline. Uh, it's very strong. <laughs> <laughs> it's up there. Uh, so they this this review is going on, and he realizes it. He gets wind to it, and he his reputation was already kind of. Uh, not taking like a big hit, but there was questions sure. and this was like, oh, this is a big deal. So he goes and he finds an, an attorney and one of the things the attorney says is like, we need to send you on a PR circuit. So they send him on Oprah. They start sending him on these talk shows to be like, hey, like alien people who've been abducted by aliens, like there's something to their story. And so like he starts going on all these shows. We need to do a PR thing and make this worse. <laughs> and yeah, Harvard was real mad about it. Yeah. Harvard was like, you got to stop doing that. And he's like, I'm tenured. What are you going to do? <laughs> And he's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm tenured. He's yeah. like, wait until the full moon. <laughs> then and then one great. night he's in his house, and uh, a sniper shoots <laughs> just four inches from his head. <laughs> and he goes, "That was weird." And there's a note on the bullet. On the bullet. <laughs> there's a note. He opens the, the bullet. bullet. He opens it's the like bullet. a little. It's like a yeah. It's like a little scroll inside. <laughs> Very long, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> this is that, what we'll do. This. <laughs> This message is for Dr. John E. Mack. If you are not Dr. John E. Mack, please roll this. The scroll contents back up of this email are confidential. John E. Mack, <laughs> shoot it at John E. Mack, please. <laughs> at your earliest convenience. <laughs> okay. Uh, so he goes on this press tour, and he becomes kind of like the face of alien abductions in the nineties, for sure. Uh, Oprah is very interested in it. She has him on a couple times. Um, she had him like come on and eat this weird stuff. One episode, he's like, I don't know what this has to do with aliens. Is and that I'm real? Just, no. Okay. <laughs> She's um, like, you'll enjoy. <clears throat> you'll enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> but he's doing like a daytime talk show circuit. Sure. Um, uh, talking about this while this investigation is going on in the background, and then something interesting happens. I don't like this. Um, I think we need to go a little deeper. Have you heard of the aerial school encounter? No. Let's take it a step deeper. Connor, roll the theme song. Things I learned last night. So this is a side story I need to Please set up. Please leave a review. <laughs> <laughs> so in the same time, there was this thing called the aerial school encounter. Okay. There was a school in Zimbabwe in the air. <laughs> uh, there was a school in Zimbabwe called the aerial school. It was a like private Christian uh, school okay. and in September on September 16th, 1994. Um, there was during recess a group of children uh, and by group of children, I mean pretty much the whole school because they were all out at recess. Uh, saw what they described as three orbs floating above the school and then they merged into one main orb and then it landed on the soccer field and they all like crowded around to see what was going on and then a uh, small what they described as like a three foot figure like rose out of the center of this orb and uh, was wearing like black tights (laughs) and had like just a really great receding hairline. (laughs) No, uh, but had big black eyes, and uh, the kids described a like sense of dread. Stereotypical alien. Yeah, but they described feeling a sense of dread, but also. I like that they all come in track suits. That's pretty fun. (laughs) Uh, It's a long journey. You gotta be comfortable. Yeah, you gotta be comfy. Um, They used to wear suits, like three piece suits, everywhere they went. But that was someone caught on that they were officiating a wedding, and they were like, "All right, oh, we gotta cover it up a little bit." Yeah, the the men in black got too popular, and they were like, "We can't." Sure. Yeah, they're copying our style now. That's where we got suits from. Um, so 
the kids described a, a handful of the kids described visions of like the world burning and all the kids walked away feeling like they wanted to become environmentalists. Um, and so the headmaster, okay. the headmaster of the school after this whole event, there was no adults out there, um, which is a little suspect, mm-hmm. but it's the 90s. All in right. A private so school I just in go one of the teachers perspectives. Yeah. Kids are all released for class. They come back <laughs> and suddenly they're like, we got to save the planet. And you're like, okay. <laughs> and they're like, you drive an SUV and you're like, okay, I don't like this attitude from you and they go, you hate this planet. You know, like all of a sudden your yeah. kid, the kids in your class are, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like the man with the big bean eyes told me to kill you. The big bean <laughs> eyes told me to take you out. <laughs> what? He told me you're going to kill earth, but he didn't call it earth. He called it Zoygen. <laughs> Zoygen. Uh, <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> Z- Hold on. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Uh, so I'll have teachers, to show you that video when we're done with this. What was happening during this recess is the teachers were in a meeting with the headmaster. Okay. And the lunch lady was actually supposed to be out there watching. And the headmaster the kids. was sitting at the table going. <clears throat> <laughs> the lunch lady was supposed to be out there helping watching the kids. Okay. But um, there was some murmurs that the kids were trying to steal some of the like snack cakes during recess. Yeah. So she went into the school to cover the snack cakes <laughs> yeah. to make sure Get some no ground kids coverage of the snack Just, cakes. Ah, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> and during this, the supposed snack case heist, the kids witnessed this UFO and it was like the whole school. Um, the headmaster then pulls kids aside uh, immediately after this event and is like, draw me a picture of what you saw. Um, and we have all these pictures and they are, let's see them. They are strikingly Similar. Um, Separated all of them. Was like, okay, draw it. Yeah, let me let me grab these. I should have probably grabbed these before. Yeah, I think that would have been probably. You, you, we were you, rushing you're, into this. You're gonna mention <coughs> some child's drawings. I'm gonna want to see them. Okay, Speaking of child's drawings, in our Discord, uh, people <laughs> <laughs> people have been submitting uh, drawings for thumbnails and different memes and stuff, and I like that a lot. So please keep doing that. Uh, if you want to join our Discord. Uh, you can be a Patreon supporter. That's how you get to be in there and send us jokes and stuff. Hey, thanks for checking out our show. If you like it and you want to support, be a part of what we're doing here, you can do that by becoming a patron. Uh, what happens there is you get to be in the community. Uh, we have a Discord with our hosts and producers. We have a lot of fun. We're super active in there every day. You get access to ad-free content a week before everybody else. And we have a Zoom every month with our patrons. Uh, we hang out, we eat pizza, we get to know you a little bit better. Uh, it's a blast. And there's a ton of other uh, different benefits like merch discounts, uh, birthday messages, things like that that are super cool. Uh, if you want to be in that, uh, you can just text Tillin to 66866 uh, and that'll get you right in there. Um, if not, we're just super glad that you're here uh, and thanks for watching our show. Yeah, that's exactly right. Thanks, and uh, as of recently, Tim has been doing some research uh, sessions. sessions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with our Patreon supporters. So he just goes live and then. Uh, you know, you can help him do the research for this. So, thank you to our Patreon for supporters for not steering him away from this topic. I didn't talk to them about this one. I wanted this one to be a surprise. Oh wow! I talked to them about the last episode. Though. Doesn't matter how much know. money you pay him; he's still going to keep secrets. <laughs> That's what his wife has learned too. <laughs> All right, so check this out. Okay, great. Uh, so here's one of them. <clears throat> Jeez. Uh, here is another. It's a different one. Yeah, that's a different one. See here, you want to see that one again? Okay. This is a different one. Okay. And then this one's a little differenter. Differenter. But still similar. Um. That's the same one. That's the other one. So yeah, these are Those these two, two are specifically similar. are very very similar. This one is somewhat. Similar. Wait, go back. Now go back to the first one. Okay, so this just want to be clear. Both pictures. Yeah. See this guy. Yeah. Go to the next picture. He doesn't have a foot in that one either. This so he's a one foot. footed. Maybe. I think this is the same image, dude. Scroll in. This is the same picture. I don't know, man. It might be. It is. Yes. Okay. Idiot. 
I don't know. He seems closer to it in this one than he does in this one. No, and there's more. This color is a there. black and white version of the picture you just showed me. No, go back to the at, first. Shut up. Go back to the, the first scrapes. one. Look at He's the got scrapes. a dot right here. Look at the little scrapes. So, okay, dot right there. These are the scrapes. Yeah, the scrapes don't Here's go as little, far up though. The scrapes don't go as far whatever. up though. These are the scrapes. He's got this little little hatch right here and yeah. a big window. Yeah. Okay, come back out. The other one, little dot. Here's the scrapes. Hatch right there. Window. This it's, is the same picture. It's very like, very these similar. These are pretty similar. It's very very it's similar. It's sketchy. It's that very these are pretty very similar. similar. I but don't the know. scratches go further oh, up. Man, it's pretty He's wild. Close. The scratches go further up. The same He's image closer. Are pretty similar. <laughs> He's Isn't that closer crazy? to the craft. And uh, and nice. look at this the, is a black hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, version hold on. of the picture. Are you joking right now? Look at the look at the dashes at the bottom. Those are longer dashes. than the dashes on yeah, this one. It's further out. I don't know, man. This is a look at the squiggly. This is a low res black and white version of this image. I don't. I mean, I see where you're coming from. I could see it. I mean, Missing I'm also with Jaren on that. I could see it. Missing a foot. I could see it. Also, look at the like the bottom lines on the structure, how it like it's the same number of lines, same orientation and that little dip halfway to that door is the same. Yeah, but if you look, if you look, look, These kids this are, one's kind of concave like all the way across. There's a concave at the bottom. This one's straight across. It's I I I I could see a possible world where you you're right. I'll, I'll give you that. I could see a possible world. Yeah, I don't know. One. I don't Are know you if it's exactly right the same. Here's you're what trying I, to here's what I, here's all of the other evidence <laughs> for. Well, I don't know. In this one, it looks like there's a little <laughs> bit of a curve, and the other one's definitely more straight. No, but I but the 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 if you look at the scratches in this one, the scratches go way above his head in the color one, uh -huh. and the scratches go to his head in the dark They're in the right black and white one. Still, Tim. I don't see this anything past his head of that image. I, I, I'm not saying it's not, but I'm also not saying it is. I mean, no, you are she saying she was it's a not. witch, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I was gonna say though: if if you compare these images, these are kind of just classic alien pictures, you know. Like if you saw an alien and like you didn't actually see the alien, and you were like, "Hey, draw a picture of the alien you saw," it probably would look something like this, anyways. Um, like these are pretty classic Tim is embarrassed aliens. right now. Just so you guys know, I'm not embarrassed. I stand by Tim what I said. Tim is humiliated. Hey, leave a review if you agree with me. <laughs> by the fact that I could see, I could see your. I see your point. I see that. I think there's. You a think they're the same? World. I think there's a possible world where they're the I same. Think I think your reluctance to admit that you showed me two of the same picture world. discredits <laughs> the entire rest of the story. If you were willing to just go, ah, yeah, those are the same, I might believe the rest of your story. Uh, no, I think there's. It's possible. It's possible. I'm not convinced for sure. All right. Anyways, um, so they all see this. By they the take way. the whole story. Everyone's got eyes. <laughs> They all see that you're gaslighting me right now. Uh, you're gaslighting me. <laughs> <laughs> I said Zuckerberg. So the uh, the headmaster takes down all their stories. Okay, he's like these drawings are kind of similar. The stories are kind of similar. These but, two are identical. But that's he, crazy. That these two <laughs> images are identical. <laughs> he's looking at the one picture. He's like, guys, look, this looks exactly like this one, and he just moves it to the side. He's got. He's well. He's just like freaking. <laughs> if you, if you cross eyes, cross your eyes, it looks like these two are the same. Uh, like, so you're holding one picture. I don't know, man. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> And so the headmaster is like, this is bogus. He's like, he's like, there's nothing to this. And so he he goes on and he's just like, you guys didn't see anything. And they're like, we saw the aliens and they want you to take better care of the planet. And so they kind of they felt invalidated. Sure. Um, word gets out about this and UFO ologists, ufologists from all <laughs> over the world are like traveling to school and like, hey, can we interview the students at the school? And they're like, absolutely not. You can't. You cannot talk to uh, our children. Yeah, absolutely not. And then they no. were like, they were holding Geiger counters up to the headmaster and they're like, you're pretty nuclear, bro. <laughs> you're kind of alien. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, you smell like aluminum. <laughs> you and Oprah smell the same. <laughs> That's just my deodorant. I have aluminum deodorant, bro. <laughs> um, and then uh, word gets back to Dr. John Mack about this. Okay. And he says, 
Let me pop them off an email. It was an email. It was a letter. It was too early for email. Well, maybe not. I don't know. When did the email start? Anyway, and he writes a little scroll. Yeah, <laughs> he shoots it into and then the just the freaking. Master all right. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go into lockdown, I think he might be trying to tell me something. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear what the shooter has to say. <laughs> there might be a scroll in that bullet. Frick, that's an intro quote. I see him typing it right now. <laughs> Let's hear what the shooter has to say. <laughs> Jesus. So he. Uh, oh no. He goes and he writes him a letter. He said, "Hey, I'm from Harvard. Can I come interview all your kids?" And they were like, oh, "Harvard, yeah." And so they let him come, and he interviews all the kids. And uh, he leaves that experience saying, hey, I think they really did experience something. Uh, and so he writes another book about this, telling their stories. This guy's crazy. Saying, okay. I think they heard something. I think they did see something. I think this is a trauma response. I don't think any of them are crazy. And then uh, he goes back home to the US, has his trial um, where uh, he wins. Uh, his lawyer was able to be like, you can't do this. And they were like, but we want to. And then he was like, you can't. And so then he got to keep his job. He was tenured. He got to keep his job. Worked there for the rest of his life until he was killed by a drunk driver in London in 2004, um, which is really sad. Um, and the driver so only got Angel Clement. The driver only Tim got six years in prison. To just go. I worked there, and then he was killed by a drunk driver in 2004. <laughs> uh, so the, I guess the main takeaway <laughs> is like, what the heck? Um, but here's the thing. Recently, uh, a new documentary came out. About the aerial school encounter, that, okay, uh, is on Netflix. Um, Called Encounters. Yes, and it's episode, yeah. I think episode three. I watched the encounters. first one. Yeah, uh, I watched half the first one, and I, I was like, "This is bogus." It's not great. It's not great. The fighter jets. Yeah. I was like, oh. the, uh, anyways, we can talk about that later. Um, there's in this documentary. It's the first documentary where they got any of the students to tell their story since they were kids. Okay. Um, a lot of the class is dead um, because they. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, in this interview, what's interesting is the majority of the kids that they got. There's about probably uh, seven or eight of adults as adults. How many are they saying saw it? Uh, pretty much the whole school. It's like uh, 200 kids. Oh, wow. it's like a smaller private school, but decent size. I, you know, um, all of them maintain the story and as adults are saying, yeah, I know what, what, I, what I saw and it changed my life like and a lot of them actually went on to become environmentalists as adults. Um, okay, which is very interesting. Um, <laughs> one guy in this interview was like, yeah, everybody's lying. I made the whole thing up. He was like, he's like, I made it up <laughs> and they're like, what? And he's like, yeah, he said I was trying to get snack cakes from the lunch lady <laughs> and I needed a diversion. <laughs> And so I said, "Hey, everybody! There's, there's some aliens. an alien over there." <laughs> and while everybody was in commotion, looking, I snuck into the lunchroom and I took some snack cakes from the lunch lady. <laughs> He's like, "I made the whole thing up. Everybody's lying." And he's like, "I don't know if a lot of people just convinced themselves of what they saw." I mean, that. I think they did. Yeah, and he's like, he's like, he's like, either they're lying or they're convinced that they actually saw that. He's like, but I made the whole thing up, <laughs> <laughs> and I do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do this whole? <laughs> no, but here, I, I do want to talk about John Mack more. But then, okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying, though, is that <laughs> so that discredits all of his work, though. Uh, kinda. What's, I mean, his work was more focused on the like the the response that they have. Yeah. What's interesting is he never said it was aliens. He, he said his, he said I think there was something something happened. some sort of response within them something yeah something happened and this is how they verbalized it but isn't that crazy though like let's let's follow the trail that you know aliens obviously don't exist and those drawings were different mm, well wow. um, so isn't it interesting though it, like these kids this kid made up a story to get yeah. some snack cakes yeah and those kids in their mind then just believed it and yeah. now they're Psyche and their physical bodies remember Remembers something it. that did not happen. That wasn't real. Yeah, not crazy. That your brain can just do that. Yeah, like trick yourself into believing something. Yeah, I mean, you tell yourself the story long enough, like you start to believe it. My barber actually the other day she told me a story. She was like, I just one day was like, I went to barber college. <laughs> 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 and she's like, My barber yeah. was like, you know, I actually. I am like a legal like medical doctor 
And she's like, I've been practicing for a little bit, but she's like, I could cut your heart out if you want me to. <laughs> I think it'll make you perform better. No, she told me she said uh, one of the other barbers in the room left for a minute. And she was like, hey, hey, while they're gone, while he's gone. Yeah, I saw something. <laughs> she said, she said, uh, she said she stole my story and she started telling it like it was hers. And she's like, and I heard her tell it. And like I heard the details and the names and stuff, and I was like, "That's my story." And she, they're like in the shop, like and she's telling another client. And she's like, "They're, they're telling my story," and so she's like, "That's she's like, wild." And it happened again, and I was like, "That's weird." And then it happened again, and now I'm like, "Does she think that is her story? <laughs> like, does she think that happened to her?" And I was like, "You should call her out on it." Uh, I was like, "I was like, you should, no, 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 that's I like, chaos." I was, like, I was like, "You should tell that story." You in should front tell of her, her. Oh, and yeah. see. You know what happened to me one time? <laughs> and see what she says. I was a, a elementary student <laughs> in Zimbabwe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> What's crazy to me is I could see a possible scenario where she got that story from that barber, and it's not actually her story either. But she thinks. Oh. She thinks that barber stole her story, but she but stole the she story. She stole the story. And she's from like, the other that, one. That barber sure. stole my story. And but and it's actually truly, that they story. both stole it from another barber <laughs> who stole it from a movie. <laughs> like, tell me the story. Okay, so I was trying to figure out how to fly across the country for free, right? And I get to the airport, there's some hot dogs, and I was like, oh, that's crazy. Uh, and I just got on a plane. Yeah. And I said, I said, I can I can I deadhead on this? I didn't even know what that meant. I, didn't even know I what just that said, meant. yeah, yeah, deadhead. Led led me eventually to barber school where I definitely went, and <laughs> um, and now I'm here. I'm classically trained. Lived in the woods for 27 Nobody years. Says classically trained. Hey, your receding hairline is so good. <laughs> I um, said that before. <laughs> uh, strictly professional. Your hairline's strictly great. Strictly professional. Strictly professional. I love your hairline. They're, they have the they have the clippers. They're clipping the hairline back. <laughs> and you're like, hey, I don't want it that far back. <laughs> That's too far back. Yes, you do. Yeah, I just really like. That's a funny thing. Hairlines. If you hate one of your clients as a barber, you could just slowly <laughs> push slowly, their hair further very back. Slowly be like, man, I think you're balding. Oh, I'm, just try- I'm just trying to shape it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're balding. <laughs> Okay, so John Mack, um, he <clears throat> he is saying that he thinks that there's this trauma response here, but uh, what a lot of his colleagues think, because uh, in the 90s this gets, I don't want to say discovered, but like there starts to become scientific proof around sleep paralysis, and so right. he's like, I think this is a subset of the population who knows about aliens, and that's them trying to explain their sleep paralysis. Sure, um, and. That doesn't explain the environmentalist part, though. But well, uh, John Mack, before he worked at Harvard, or before he was the head, the headmaster, before he was the director of the department, <laughs> when he was just a professor at Harvard, before he was Professor Dumbledore, um, him, along with Carl Sagan, <laughs> marched into uh, a nuclear test facility. It was I shouldn't say just Carl Sagan. Like there was like a hundred professors, okay, of just different sciences. They marched into a nuclear test facility as like a sign of civil disobedience to be like, you guys need to stop doing this. You're going to destroy the planet. Um, so he added that there's there's a possible reason to believe he was trying to come up with a, a supernatural extraterrestrial reason why we need to stop damaging our planet. Uh, that could be a potential motive for that. Like we sure. don't know if that's true or not. So there's some questions there. One uh, other detail about him was he was trying to save the planet by combining. He was like, I want two burgers, but I want it in one bun or a one wrapper. You know, yeah. he's like, just put it on top of the other one. Yeah, and they were like, that's a big sandwich, man. That's a really <laughs> that's a bro. That's a big sandwich. It's like Mac. a big. That's a big. That's a. I can't believe we caught this on camera, but that's a big Mac. <laughs> big Mac. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's just my arteries. <laughs> and he was like, he's like, I want some royalties for that. And McDonald's is like, you're going to die when you go to London next week. <laughs> he's like, I'm not going to London next week. We bought your flight already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll see you there. I mean, we won't see you there. The hamburger will. 
<laughs> oh man. So yeah, that was the end of uh Big Mac. Wow. <laughs> Big John Mac. It, I can't believe. All right. Well, <laughs> we can fiddle him off. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Things I Learned Last Night. Uh, if you like our show, please subscribe so you don't miss any more in the future. And then we've also got like clips and other episodes and a bunch of other stuff that we've created. We've been doing this show for a long time, uh, but we're glad that you're here now. So please go enjoy our other stuff. Or if you hated us, please just block us. I know never come back. Never be here again. I never want to hear from you. <laughs>